Hello everyone, how are you today? I'm Hanny B with Hanny B Creations and I have the funnest project to show you. I'm so excited about this one. This is an art project, recycle project. This is a have fun with your kids project. Have fun teaching your students project. I'm not sure if you can tell by looking at this what kind of bottle this is. It's a medicine bottle. I've, I've been using um, the lids for things, but the reason I didn't make use of the containers was because I didn't like the containers. I mean, they're just ugly, and who would want to store their stuff in, like, ugly medicine bottle containers, even though... They are very useful. They aren't um, necessarily waterproof, but they they will float, so the water doesn't actually absorb unless unless it's submerged into water. I have been dabbling around trying to come up with ideas for these for a while, but what would happen is I would go to paint the, um, paint on them, and the paint would just come right off. So I couldn't figure out how I was going to change the look enough to where where I would be happy even sharing the idea. I have finally accomplished that, and so that's why I'm here. Now, this was drawn on with Faber-Castell ink pen, and then I filled it in with acrylic paint. You can also use Copic markers watercolor pencils, the uh, Faber-Castell, I'll, I'll go over the list of, of things that you can use. Uh, nothing works to the degree of the acrylic paint. However, prior to what I discovered and what I'm going to show you today, that wouldn't have worked. Acrylic paint would not have s s adhered. But this, I have finally got it worked out. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to come off even, I mean, maybe if you, you know, got out a knife or something, but it, it's on there pretty good. This is perforated. It's bumpy. You can see that. So you can kind of see it bumped up there. I love to share my ideas, especially ideas like this one, where you can take a simple bottle and create something out of it that is useful instead of just tossing it in the trash. That's what this is all about, is creating art, having fun, and recycling in the process. So anyway, how about if we get started and I'll show you what I did. Stay tuned. Okay, so for this project, you're going to want to make sure you have it one empty medicine bottle. And this is a large one. Make it whatever size you want. They come in all different sizes, but this is a pretty good size right here. I think it's two inches across the top. Steel wool. I use Superfine for just about everything because it, it does what I need it to do, but it doesn't um, create any scratches. You're going to need a plastic spray paint to prep your bottle. And you're going to want to have an outdoor waterproof Verithane Spar Urethane. This is clear. So just make sure it's a clear outdoor so it's it's so it's waterproof water resistant just want to make sure that your work is protected I love this this is glossy accents and this is also protective too but it works more for the top than it does on the side it takes a while to dry Faber-Castell make sure that it's for glass plastic metal and that's what this one is so whatever you use. Now I've also noticed that the Copic works pretty good, the Copic black marker. 
but I do like using the Copics. You can also use Sharpie, Faber-Castell watercolor pencils, and Prismacolor watercolor pencils. These all work great. Okay, so that's all you need, and I will be leaving a list of everything in the description box as well. Step one, I have two bottles here. This is the small and this is the large. This is about two inches around, and I think it's the largest that they come in. I'm not sure. And this is probably the smallest. So first step, take your steel wool, and we're just going to steel wool the top. Okay, and you're also going to want to make sure to do the sides, and because they have like a, you want to make sure that you still wool that real well, and try to get inside the little crevices as much as you possibly can. And just, it's hard to see because you don't have anything to rub off, but just kind of add a fair amount of pressure, go around the bottle can see that there's a lot of dust. I'm sure you have a dust free area and you'll want to wipe these off with a with a rag or something before you clean them. Now with the bottle itself you're going to want to do the same thing. And as you can see this side is very shiny and then when you steel wool it it becomes very dull. Still wool the entire thing, even up in here. So once you have this all prepped, leave your caps on, attached to the bottle. Follow the directions on the plastic spray paint uh, can. And spray your tops first. It makes it easier to get to the sides with the lid attached because you can touch it and spray paint around like this if you need to. Use rubber gloves if you're gonna have to hold it. Otherwise, you know, I usually just set them down and I just go around and, and spray it around. Make sure you're outside or in a well-ventilated area in the garage or something, of course. And, um, and then once your lids have dried, then I recommend taking the lids off, flipping your, all your bottles upside down, and spray painting the bottles. It should end up looking like this once you're done nice and even and I just chose this color because I thought it was a good color for me to work with it's not pure white and it's not clear so actually I just think it's a good base color for art if you want to just go out and buy some plastic spray paint and you know spray them dark black or blue or whatever color you like it's up to you all right so let's get on to the next step This is just a sketch and wash graphite pencil, and I like to use it to mark down my pattern before I get started using the uh, permanent marker. Okay, so um, yeah, for this one, I just decided to do a little simple pattern. 
I'm gonna just make little squares. This is, this is what I like to do. And then if I just hate the pattern, I can change it. I can just wipe it off. For this pattern here, I'm gonna just use the Copics. I'm going to take my Copic marker here and where I've made these double lines, I'm going to fill that in. But first I'm going to wipe off my, my pencil. My lines are going to be a little bit light and I'll have to go over them. This is common basically because I'm using such a fine tip and my marker is a size small. Okay, now that you can see that I've made some lines thicker. So now I'm just going to go over these, these lines here and just make them not too much thicker, but just a tad thicker than what they are. Green. Purple. If your colors mix, you can always just wipe it, wipe your tip off on a napkin there. I can see some of my black is bleeding in. But that's because I have a lot of it. And with Copics, that's what happens because um, the colors the alcohol in the pen picks up the color from the from the other color that you just laid down. In this case, it was black. There's no real pattern that I'm doing here with, with regards to laying down the color. I'm just kind of laying it down wherever. Take a white Sharpie pen. This is just one that I feel like using. And on my very thick, thick lines going this way, I'm just going to drop some dots in there. Now, 
I'm going to attempt on these lines going this way to do a little squiggly line. So as you can see, you just create a fun pattern and play around. And so this is using the Copic markers. And I just want to show you, okay, I'm going to take my Kleenex. I'm going to damp it and huh, make sure it's dry. I get nervous. I always think it's going to Okay. It sticks. As it dries even more, that won't happen. But that's just a tiny, tiny bit, and I definitely rubbed it. It's still kind of wet. So, I wouldn't have been able to accomplish this had I not prepped it first with the steps that were taken. Now I want to show you how to do it with the watercolor pencils. I'm not going to decorate the entire thing fully just for the sake of the demonstration. I just want to show you what what can be done. So here's one that I did last night and I used Copic markers for this one. Isn't that cool? You know all I did was um, I took my markers, I'll just demonstrate. All I did was I just dabbed like this, little dots, do, 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 all over. And then I did one color and then I came in and did another color. Let's see? This is a little bit darker green than the one that I have on there because it's showing up. You see it? I don't want to do too much of that one because I don't really care for it. As I go back over it with the blue, it drowned out the uh, green that I just laid down. And yeah, it kind of looks like mosaic, but then also, it also kind of looks like Reminds me of tie-dye a little bit. Because of the way it, it, the little designs, if you look really, 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 really close. Let's see if I can. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. Well, how about I just draw my own flowers? I'll do something different than what I did before. Just gonna make start. I'll, I'll do something similar, but just a different shape. Well, it's fun to create the design where it's everything's really close together. I like that. I like that idea. So, um, and the good thing is, is that it does not have to be perfect at all. It can just be whatever you want to make it. It's almost like doodling, I guess.
see that's what I mean if you do it with your pencil first and you mess up then you can go back and fix it so you can use sharpies also if you don't have the Copics all right that's not bad it's not great but that's okay it the fun part the funnest part about it is is that it just still kind of works out no matter what you do even if you're not the greatest artist make it your own I'm gonna go over it with the black Copic since it's thicker and works the same happens but you can go over it if it's probably just a good idea to wait just a little bit longer I should have waited that's okay so I'm going to use the Faber Castell watercolor and you have to apply some pressure with these This works better if you have a, a thicker tip, you know, like a size M instead of a small. So in cases like this, I'll just um, take my Copic and wipe off that black see how that works it's kind of cool that's what's good about the Copics so see this black spot right here I can just go over it with yellow like that Because when, see now I've got a little bit on my napkin where it's black and yellow. Because what happens is when you use a Copic over another Copic, it kind of it wipes off the previous color. I'm just going to get right to the point here. And get my watercolor brush and some water. And my paper towel napkin. And uh, so when I go over it with the watercolor brush, don't use a lot of water, just a little bit on your brush. And just Pick up that color. I'm getting a little bit of streaking there. I just want to do it very lightly. And I like to go back and forth and like this circular type motion.
brightens up quite a bit once you put the water on. Gives it a nice wash color. The best part is once you've got your artwork on the way you want it is sealing it in. Because that actually brightens up the colors too. So now I'm going to just go over this one here a second time. Now what I'm going to do is do a couple with the Prisma, just to give you an idea of the difference next to each other. I'm going to do a pink one now, another, another pink one over here. So you can see the difference in the color. So this one is the Prisma. I mean, did I say Prisma? I mean Copic. This one's the Copic. And this is the Faber-Castell watercolor. So it just depends on what look you're going for. Um, it's hard to tell that they're two different mediums, actually. Because... Whatever you put down on here is going to streak a little bit. It's just the way it goes. But it comes out like this when we put the, um, the gloss on it. And you can't really tell that it was too streaky. If you like this idea and you decide to create your own, I would be so appreciative if you guys would mention my my name where you got the idea especially if it's something that you create online I would certainly appreciate that because I worked hard for this I don't mind people sharing or using their art to to show off but I would actually really, really appreciate people letting others know where they got their ideas. Because I know this hasn't been done. I've worked on it, like I said, for probably almost two years, really. I've been creating with this, with these um, lids for a while. And, yeah, I just haven't made a video.
Now using our glossy accents for the final touches. Follow the directions on the bottle. You kind of want to use it sparingly. Just play around with it and uh, until you get used to it. So you're going to use the glossy accents on the areas that you want to protect or, you know, to stand out. I usually just use it on the lid specifically. And I just highlight the areas like the flowers, the leaves. Okay, I'm, I'm going to switch um, artwork here because the other one, it was still wet along the sides and I was getting black ink on my hands. So make sure that the glossy accents is just kind of dab a little bit onto your cardboard to make sure that it's the well isn't clogged up. Keeping it tilted upright, you're just going to want to make sure that you do not shake it and you want to apply to the areas that you want perforated. It spreads a little bit so just be very, just be careful with how you apply it. And I'm just going to do the one flower because I forgot to actually fill in my um, centers and since you've already seen what the glossy accents could do I basically just wanted to demonstrate it for you how it's applied so there it is and I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in my flowers before I continue to use the glossy accents on this and then you will just let it dry following the directions and once your artwork is completed this is a butterfly and I put the glossy accents over it now with this one it did smear a little bit the, the uh, artwork underneath I'm not sure why that happened I'm thinking it might have been the markers that I used like I said before the acrylic paint actually gives you the best results when it comes to the entire process but it is still up to you how you want to proceed and so what I would do in this case I didn't color around the butterfly this is just my original spray paint uh, plastic spray paint and the color so in this case for the lid I would do nothing else to that it would be complete however I did go over my spray painted canvas and used a very pretty blue paint which was the Martha Stewart I think it was pond or something like that yeah it was pond and I like the the two-tone so I was just planning to maybe put some dots on here maybe around some blue dots that but whatever I do and whatever you do at the end you're gonna want to coat your finished pieces um, with the clear coat that I suggested which is the spray um, outdoor spray paint clear to that will protect your artwork in the end so I think I've covered it all in terms of how to go about applying your artwork to the to the containers and um, what you're going to want to use to protect them. So this pretty much wraps it up. I hope that you got something out of it. I hope you will have lots of fun with these containers. And stay tuned because I do intend to hold a contest in the near future. I want to see what some of you guys come up with and the winner I haven't decided what the prize is going to be yet um, I just think that this would be a really cool contest idea uh, and um, I just want to see what you guys come up with from these ideas that I'm giving you I will be posting a video within the near future hopefully to put out a contest uh, an art contest and you don't have to send your 
You don't have to send your bottles into me or anything, just um, pictures will do. The winner will get a pretty cool prize. I, I, like I said, I'm not sure what that prize would be. Maybe you guys could send me some ideas. Um, also make sure that you subscribe because if you don't subscribe, I am not able to answer your questions and comments. So thanks so much again for watching. I look forward to seeing what you guys create and I'll be in touch soon.